So what we have here is one of the more controversial Chainsaw Man chapters in quite some time. Now there's a couple of good reasons for this, but there's also a couple of not so good reasons for it. After reading this chapter, I feel a little bit on the fence. There's a couple of things that I feel like Fujimoto is doing that is a little bit odd, a little bit time consuming, a little bit this, a little bit that. But then on the other hand, I like to allow Fujimoto to cook. So I might be too quick to judge, too quick to absorb what he's doing and maybe I I should just let him do what he does best. The thing is, he's never really disappointed me before, and I can speak for myself, but I can't speak for you. Maybe you don't like Chainsaw Man. Maybe you don't like part two. Maybe you don't like where he's taken Denji as a character, or currently what's going on now. But we're going to talk about the controversial stuff, we're going to talk about the chapter, and we're going to talk a little about the future. So, let us start at the beginning. Controversy. Yippee. We always love to talk about these things. Sometimes they're very small, minimalistic things. Other times, big, revolutionary type beat. Chainsaw Man's controversy right now, I would say, is a mix of a couple of small things that lead into bigger things. More specifically, that big thing being your enjoyment. I have witnessed with my own eyes, through Twitter, through YouTube comments, even YouTube videos. There is a, an increasingly large amount of people that are starting to lose faith in Fujimoto's approach to storytelling. This has started with part two and kind of amplified over time with the Chainsaw Man Church, what Denji's doing currently. Really aren't sure what his direction or overall goal is for this story. There's one big rule for all of this, by the way. A lot of these people do not like the pacing that Fujimoto is currently going with. Just isolating the past handful of chapters, it feels like a lot of things are coming to a stop or taking very small, tiny steps to get where it wants to go, but never really giving you too much information. It gives you enough, it feeds you a little bit, but you're never fully satisfied. That hunger is still there. I don't 100% agree with this. There is instances where I feel like there is some sort of repetition going on or some sort of very slow, drawn out process that could have easily been shortened or cut short, whatever you want to call it, and moved on from. But then on the other side, genuinely enjoy the intimacy of how slow these moments are. For myself, it feels a lot more weighty. It feels a lot more urgent. It feels different. It doesn't feel like a situation that we've been in before because those other times would have been flown through with pace, with speed. A situation like this being delicate with its time, showing everything in excruciating detail may be slow for a lot of people, but I think a majority of you enjoy how sensitive it can be towards Denji as a character, towards Naoyata as a character, and towards this moment as a whole. That's kind of where we're sitting currently. In the grand scheme of a chapter and how long it is between chapters, I can honestly understand why people aren't thirsty to keep up with the story. You have massive breaks between these very slow chapters and it feels like a really drawn out experience. Like not just the chapter itself, but potentially going two, three months and only moving a couple of inches. This isn't weekly Shonen Jump. This isn't a monthly story. This is something segmented in between that stops and starts whenever Fujimoto feels like he can do it. I applaud him doing this decision and writing a story with different pacing that not a lot of people are used to, but it does come at a cost, and I think more and more of the community is recognizing that. The other controversy that is a little bit more prominent, a little bit more easy to notice, is the artwork. I would say over the past handful of chapters, there has been a very noticeable decrease in the definition, in the finesse, in the artistry of Tatsuki Fujimoto. Now a lot of you might not agree with it. Just looking at this newest chapter, after a three week break, there is moments of Denji that feel very scribbly, and while it is part Fujimoto's style, I would say it's overly scribbly. It's overly chaotic. It's overly kind of unrecognizable. It's not overblown where you can't comprehend what's going on, but it's very easy to lose track of Denji's body per se. Maybe even the movement, maybe even the background. A lot of things are starting to blend together because of this haphazard kind of sketchy art style that he's going for. Now an argument you could bring up is, well, oh, it's part of Denji's character and it's showing how chaotic and uncontrolled he's becoming, you can run with that and by all means go for it. But currently, at this moment, it doesn't really fit. Denji is in a very weird predicament and providing clarity for his character, his bodily movements, I feel would be the best representation for him so you can crystally clear understand what he's doing. 
what he's trying to do, how he's moving. This is just him on his own, by the way, not talking about the action that comes with it, which arguably is a lot more unrecognizable. It's very chaotic and very all over the place. Again, there could be a lot of reasons for this. Maybe he's not feeling well. Maybe he's changing assistance. Maybe there's just a lot on his plate currently where he can't provide this type of extended clarity. I don't know. All we can work off is what we're getting. And some of the panels, whether he's getting attacked, honestly, it's very difficult to see what's going on. And you kind of just piece it all together of, okay, simple as that. In saying all of that, let's talk about the chapter because it's pretty straightforward. In terms of distance with where the story actually goes, it's not all too far. It's a couple of tiptoe forward and a little tiptoe forward more and every single chapter kind of feels like that, but it's building momentum a little bit. What I mean by that is that there's not really all too much going on here. It kind of just amplifies what you already know, what you already experienced and where you're already going. It becomes a lot more drastic, a lot more dangerous and pretty brutal, but it's all stuff that you've either mentally prepped for or have experienced. The real meat of this chapter is Naoyata and how she's perceiving Denji currently. See, Denji was rather subdued. He didn't really know what was going on. A lot of other people started to come in, start to blame him, start to recognize what he was and what he was doing, blaming him for a lot of other things that were external from him. So he's just copying everything currently and these people aren't making it easy. They're stabbing him, they're kicking him while he's down, they're putting a net on top of him. His response to Naoyata was what really concerned us because he was asking her to leave. But but right here, even within the midst of this confusion and people trying to protect her and rip her away, questioning herself and what she should or shouldn't do, there's this very beautiful moment where she remembers how much Denji actually loves her, with the acknowledgement of his arms being wide apart. And she makes a choice, and I think this is a, a turning point for her as a character. She cares about Denji, she's willing to fight for Denji, but when he turned around and told her to leave, to be on her own, to not be around him, of course you're world's going to be turned upside down. Her kind of reflecting on that moment, watching Denji, by the way, getting beat down and obliterated with no one helping him, she makes that choice. For me, it's actually taken a lot away from Denji and emphasized her choice a lot more. Before she gets moving, however, starts using her abilities on the general public that are here to kill Denji, there is a very beautiful moment with Denji resisting the urge to fight the general public. If you ever needed proof or you didn't believe that Denji cares about human life or cares about the damage that he actually causes, this is the perfect chapter for you. See, when they have him in the lowest position, he's not fighting back. He's barely even moving. Mind you, he could run away. So his mind, I'd argue, is clear that he knows what he's doing and that he doesn't want to leave now you're behind even though he could get out of this situation it would involve disappearing from her there is the other situation where he could just unleash all hell and obliterate everyone but he wants to raise now you to right and i'd like to believe that's why he's not going on this warpath that's why he hasn't completely obliterated these innocent people and has only fought back disgustingly so against the ones attacking him being the hybrids he's trying to mitigate as much damage as possible Possible, and that comes with a very specific thought response because previous chapter we thought he was losing it when in reality maybe he's just scared to show Naya to the true side of what Chainsaw Man is what it represents what it becomes what he becomes I think now you're witnessing all of this the fact that she knows Denji could kill everyone here and escape and stop this damage yet he takes it he takes all of this injury all of this pain for the sake of potentially not showing her a cruel sight on innocent civilians so she starts taking over the innocent civilians and it's just such a great scene knowing that these two can work side by side helping one another and it makes me excited but also equally nervous because now the general public is going to turn on her because you know straight away this news is going to get out that there's going to be a young girl with a chainsaw devil kill her on sight too the only thing i'm really worried about is the ending where now you're to tell chainsaw man to run away and it makes me think that he might actually do it and then she gets taken away by the people People. Now it is strong, but she's not overwhelmingly strong. She can't handle a large group of people with weaponry because she's not combat savvy. She's not a Makima 2.0. It's a new situation for her that's developing and I hope that Denji doesn't just dip. That he actually grabs her and leaves with her maybe with fumiko as well to end it there of all places is brutal we haven't moved all too far but we've introduced some very important notes some stuff that we can digest and while it is a slow and very steady pace 
I think there is exciting things on the horizon. We're reaching that point of critical where things can rapidly change within a singular chapter. Everything is on its move. So maybe, just maybe, all of the issues, all of the concerns, the controversies that Chainsaw Man has right now might be quelled with future chapters. It'll all pay off in the end. At least I believe it to be so. Hello, welcome to the end of the video. If you made it this far, thank you. I appreciate you. Why not leave a like and subscribe? That'd be nice. That'd be pretty cool. Also, check out one of these videos right here. Helps YouTube know that my video should be recommended for others. Something to do with continuous watch time. However, I would love to hear your thoughts on the chapter, where you think everything's going, and I will see you all later.